Hello, my name is Darren McBride. I'm one of the project leads for the NetSwap Plus backup appliance for highly reliable systems. I'd like to show you the product today and talk about some of the more important features. The first of these features is the integration of a removable hard drive that works in conjunction with an internal hard drive so that you have two copies of all your data. This removable drive can be used to transport the data off-site, giving you extra protection. The second is NAS to NAS replication over the internet, or what we call box to box replication. The third is called speed seed, and that's the ability to use this removable drive to augment the replication over the internet for times when replication is too slow or bandwidth is too expensive. Let's talk about each of these three software features in more detail. What AMT does for you is that it allows you to mirror the internal hard drive to the removable hard drive in hardware. This means that if you purchase the NetSwap Plus with a one terabyte drive, you want to size the removable drive at one terabyte as well. And you can get this in either one, two, three, or four terabyte increments. In addition to giving you a second copy of your precious data, which is a very important feature, AMT also gives you another important functionality, and that is it can be used with software that is unaware of drive swaps. So if you're using something like Symantec Backup Exec that doesn't like you to swap drives, because the hard drive never drops offline, the internal is always exposed to the network, the software does not see the drive swap, allowing you to pull a drive, insert a new one, and that will automatically start remirroring at a rate between 300 to 500 gigabytes per hour, meaning that if you had a one terabyte drive, that thing is gonna be caught up in about two and a half hours. Let's take a look at how some of this stuff works. We use a set of keys to provide a physical protection, make sure that there's security for the removable drive. It also is used to remove power from that hard drive. Once we turn the key, we can easily pull the removable drive and transport it off-site. You'll notice that this removable drive has a connector that's intended for thousands of plugs and unplug cycles. In other words, we're not relying on the native SATA connector on the back of the hard drive. The SATA hard drive is actually inside the drive tray and is fully protected by aluminum on all sides so that you have protection for that hard drive. You'll also notice that when I pulled this hard drive, a red LED came on. That red LED tells me that the mirroring has been broken between the internal hard drive and the external hard drive. You'll also notice that I don't have a monitor, a keyboard, or a mouse on this box. This is referred to as a headless box. So how do I configure it? The way I do that is I use any standard computer and a browser. So we open up Firefox as our browser and we enter in the IP address of the NetSwap Plus, which in this case is 192.168.10.50. And normally I would provide a password to log in, but I've already done that. Uh, it comes up to the status screen and one thing you'll notice if I scroll down slightly here is that the state of the mirror disk is shown as degraded. That's the same information we saw based on the LED when I removed the drive that that removable drive since it's currently been pulled out is, uh, is in a degraded state. Let's take a look at what happens when we reinstall the drive. I'm going to insert the drive in the removable drive bay, latch it in, and then use the key to lock it into place. You'll notice that as soon as the drive is installed, within about 10 seconds, the hard drive will be detected and the system will start re-mirroring and that's indicated on the LEDs by the blinking lights that show that we're transmitting data from the internal hard drive to the removable hard drive. This mirroring process in this demo will take no more than a few minutes because the uh, hard drives are partitioned at fairly small for demonstration purposes. You'll notice that now that the drive's been installed, the mirror status still shows as degraded. However, we see that we've already rebuilt 43% of the mirroring. And Notice also that the mirroring process is occurring at about 489 gigabytes per hour. This will vary uh, a little bit, but that mirroring speed is really quite fast. It tells you that within about two hours, we can re-mirror this entire one terabyte drive. The next feature I really want to show you is the NAS to NAS replication, or box to box replication as we call it. This box is going to represent an appliance that you install at your office. And this one is going to represent an appliance that you install at a remote location, such as the owner's home, an IT provider that's been trusted, or even a remote office. 
let's take a look at the interface and how we configure replication jobs so that when we back up to an appliance, they automatically replicate over the internet to the other side. Now looking at the browser interface for the NetSwap Plus, you'll notice that there's an entire section here set up for replication. And I've previously set up what's called a replication job that I called trade show test. And let's take a look at how this job is configured. If I go into trade show test, you'll see that I've asked it to replicate a folder on the hard drive called the data folder. Most of the time, you'll probably want to replicate the entire hard drive. In this case, I wanted the demo to be fairly quick, so I'm replicating just one folder on the hard drive. Let's take a look at the options to configure these replication jobs. You'll notice that I'm uh, choosing a location called Remote Net S, which is the box over at the 51 address. I've also had to provide user credentials so that we can only authenticate and make sure that we have security on our um, replication. Of course, replication is also encrypted at whatever level you want it to be encrypted at. Now, one of the features of the replication is what's called bandwidth limits. You can actually throttle the bandwidth. This is so that you don't use 100% of your bandwidth during the day when your users are trying to use the internet. You can actually set a time and three different schedules so that you can throttle that bandwidth back. You also have the ability to choose how often replication is going to occur. In this case, I've set a very aggressive replication schedule of every one minute so that we can actually delete a couple files on the remote box and then prove that they get replicated back within 60 seconds. So let's go ahead and finish this replication job off. Let me bring up the folder on the remote box. Now you'll notice the IP address I'm looking at is 192.168.10.51. That's the IP address of our remote NetSwap Plus appliance. And I'm going to just pick two files at random here and I'm going to delete them. So I'm going to push the delete key, ask me if it's okay to delete it, and I'm going to say yes. So those two files have been deleted. And remember, we have a replication job set up to go every 60 seconds. So if we wait just a little bit here, what we expect to see happen is that the two files I just deleted will get re-replicated from our uh, .50 box, which is representing our local on-site appliance, to our remote appliance. So you see that the two files I previously deleted have now uh, magically been put back into the folder. And that's a sign that our replication job has uh, kicked off within the 60 second window and updated the files on the remote side. And that's how NAS to NAS replication works. The last feature I'd like to talk to you about is SpeedSeed. SpeedSeed is where we use the internal drive to transport to the remote side to help our, our backup out. This is done a lot of times at the beginning of a replication because it's very difficult to replicate, say, a terabyte of data over the internet. It could take a month or more, depending on the customer's bandwidth. So with SpeedSeed, what we're going to do is transport the internal drive from the office location to the remote location and tell the remote location that this is a seed drive. What that will do is make it the master over at the remote location, allowing you to immediately have your data and begin replication only on the changes going forward. Let's demonstrate that by looking at what this looks like on the screen. You'll notice that the... Uh, there is a button called Make Seed on the removable disk. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Make, make Seed button. What this will do is it will actually warn me that it's going to break the mirror and mark the drive as a seed disk. So I'm going to confirm that. And what we're now doing is breaking the, the mirror and marking the drive as a seed drive. So I'm going to say to, OK to that. Now I'm going to turn back to the device. And I'm going to remove the seed drive. So I turn it off. I pull this drive. And of course, at this point, you would transport it to the remote location. In this case, our remote location is right next door. So I'm going to go ahead and install this seed drive and turn that on. Now the red LED tells us that at this mo moment, there's no mirroring occurring in this device. What we have to do is go back to our interface and tell the remote box 
that the C drive has been installed. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to change my interface over to the 192.168.10.51 and you'll notice that under the disks setting, if I refresh everything, there is an option now to seed the mirror disk. Now what's so unique about this is when I click seed the mirror disk, it'll actually warn me that the external removable drive is going to be made the master disk. This is actually what we want. We want a mirror in reverse. So when I confirm this, what's going to happen is that data from the removable drive is now going to be the master data and it's going to be replicated to the internal. The advantage of this speed seed is, is that we can now start our replication immediately. Let's say that it was going to take as much as 12 hours or even 24 hours for that mirror to complete. We can still use the replication jobs immediately because the master drive is the removable. We don't have to wait to copy that removable drive like you would with a conventional setup. Let's look one more time at the remote locations interface. You'll see that mirroring is now underway. The seed drive that we had installed is uh, currently 37% done. It's not going to take very long for the data on that removable drive to mirror itself back to the internal drive. And at that point, everything will be caught up and we will have a mirrored set of drives at the remote location again. And that's the NetSwap Plus. As we've seen, it offers a removable hard drive integrated into the box. It offers automatic mirroring technology along with NAS to NAS replication and SpeedSeed. This is all done in an affordable network attached storage appliance that's intended for backup. If you'd like to learn more about the NetSwap Plus or any of our HiRely products, visit us at www.hi-rely.com.